starts, the senior choir is going to sing in lieu of the play, prelude this morning, and they'll be singing from the rear of the sanctuary. Thank you, Senior Choir, and thank you everyone for joining or braving the bad weather this morning to come and worship with us on this first Sunday of Advent. Just a few announcements this morning from the bulletin. The Christmas caroling is next Sunday, December 8th. If you haven't, please sign up out in the gathering place, and there will be uh, lunch provided after the service and prior to caroling. Uh, also next Sunday, a reminder that the children's Christmas program will take place during the uh, worship. And on December 14th, the Women's Fellowship Christmas Breakfast will be held from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Cedar Grill. And a reminder on December 15th, during the Sunday school hour, Lowell and Kathy Smith will be here in the sanctuary speaking and showing slides of their mission work in India. And now for an Advent greeting. Does anyone have any additional announcements? In the desert of life, prepare a pathway for God. In the wilderness, make a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, and the glory of God shall be real, revealed among us. And now if Janet and Dave could come up for the lighting of the Advent candle. We welcome all of you this morning on the first Sunday of Advent. This morning's Bible readings speak about the light of Jesus Christ who came into our world. The first reading is Isaiah 2, verses 1 to 5. The word which Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it, and many people shall come and say, 
Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And the second reading is Romans 13, 11, verses 11 to 14. Besides this, you know what hour it is, how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness. I'm sorry, litigious. I'm sorry, I can't say that word. But in not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify his, its desires. The prophet Isaiah saw a revelation from God where God showed him nations shall come to it. And God will teach everyone his ways and walk in his light. And God's rule will bring justice to all the world. And Isaiah concludes by telling the house of Jacob to walk in the light of the Lord. The Apostle Paul also tells us as Christians to not only walk in the light of the Lord, but to put on the armor of light. The way we live our lives needs to reflect who Jesus is in our everyday lives. And if we have sin in our lives, Paul tells us to cast off the works of darkness and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. During the season of Advent, it is important to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus. That includes the way we live each day. May we be faithful to God until our Lord Jesus comes. Can we please pray together? Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus into our lives so that we may know how to live and prepare for his coming. We pray that we, as people of this church, would live our lives in a manner that is worthy to you. Be with those in our fellowship who are sick and homebound. Give them your hope and joy as we celebrate this joyful time of Advent. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. We light the first candle of Advent in preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Thank you, Dave and Janet. Now, if everyone could please stand, if you're able, and join us in the singing of the opening, opening hymn, and that'll be O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 542 in the brown hymnal.
Please join me for the reading of the invocation prayer. Help us wait in patient hope for your coming, O Lord. Open our eyes to see the signs. Open our ears to hear the prophets. Assure us that our wait will not be in vain, for we wait in the strength of your promise. Amen. And you may be seated and sit back and enjoy another selection from the senior choir, please. Thank you, Senior Choir. Wonderful job. If the officers may come forward, I'll read the operatory statement once you're up front. And if everyone could please bow your heads in prayer for the operatory statement. Dear God, I offer you my praise. I offer you my heart. I offer you my money. I offer you my life. Thank you for everything you give to me. Amen. And now the children may be dismissed for Children's Church. And the operatory hymn will be number 554 in the brown hymnal. There's a song in the air.
morning. Good to see all of you here this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. I want to thank uh, Tim for leading us this morning in, in our worship service. We kind of our time of uh, sharing uh, our prayer concerns. And in your bulletins, you'll see uh, a list of names that we need to uh, keep in prayer. I want to give an update on a few folks this morning. We need to remember uh, Anna May Cup, uh, who uh, has some heart uh, problems, heart issues. Uh, she is in Good Samaritan Hospital. Um, if you want to go uh, visit her, she asks that you call ahead to see if she's up for company. Uh, so keep uh, Anna May Cup in prayer. Also, um, got a uh, prayer text this morning that we need to remember uh, Michael Snyder. Michael Snyder uh, in prayer. He is in the Lehigh Valley Hospital uh, Intensive Care Unit. You also see in your bulletins um, Catherine Hartgraff's uh, brother passed away, Elmer Nauer. Uh, so uh, keep, uh, keep him in prayer. And this week we're praying for the uh, West Green Tree Church of the Brethren. Received this note from um, Dottie Nagel from the Sharing Cupboard. Um, they have a prayer concern box down there for ones who come in for prayer. And I want to uh, read um, a note that was in there. Please pray for me and Evelis and Paul. We need a lot of prayers. Help us through our troubled and difficult time. Help me and my son find a nice place to stay. As a single mother, please pray for me and knowing I have a fixed income of F SSI to help, uh, help that we can find a safe and perfect home. She says, being a single mother is hard for me, as, uh, but all the prayers I can get is wonderful. Help me get closer to Christ like I was before. Uh, God bless. So we'll keep uh, the name uh, as Evelis and Paul in prayer. Let's uh, bow our heads this morning for our morning prayer. God, on this first Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we uh, wait with anticipation, much like the early Christians did, of the coming of our Savior. We pray that we would examine our hearts and examine our lives as we prepare for Christ's coming, much like we do in the season of, of Lent. God, we pray this morning that you would be with the many people, Lord, who I've mentioned this morning. We pray for uh, Evelis and Paul, Lord, that this heartfelt uh, plea for the single mother to find a place to stay, Lord. We just uh, lift this couple to you, the single mother to you, Lord, as they find a place, Lord. We just pray that you would open up doors of opportunity, Lord, that she would receive, Lord, the help that she needs, Lord, through your miraculous care. We also pray this morning for um, Anna May Cup, who has some uh, heart problems. Be with her and Landis, Lord, uh, as, as they go through um, Anna May's uh, health issues. We pray, Lord, your healing and strength to be with them. We pray for Michael Snyder right now, who's in uh, Lehigh Valley ICU. Lord, with uh, the difficulties that uh, Michael has faced over the years, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, just uh, comfort him and give him, Lord, um, your healing and strength. Also, Lord, we pray for, for Anna Mae, Lord, just continue to watch over her during this time. Lord, we uh, lift up... Uh, uh, Catherine uh, Hartgraff, Lord, as she is dealing with the loss of her brother, and we pray that you would give her and the family comfort in, in their time of need. 
Lord, this week we pray for the uh, West Green Tree Church of the Brethren within our district. We thank you for this church and for the uh, witness and the ministry that the church has had uh, these many years, Lord. Uh, we pray for the ministry of this church, Lord, that you would provide for their ministry needs. We pray for the pastors, uh, for the uh, leaders of this church, Lord, that you would watch over them, Lord, and, and bless the ministry that they do. Lord, we um, lift up uh, our church this morning as we come to this time of the Advent season. We pray that we would, Lord, be ever mindful of the ministry that we do. Uh, help us to know, Lord, that we have an inner ministry here with each other. We pray that we would have, Lord, a heart and, and compassion and kindness, Lord, towards each other here in this church. We also pray for our outer mission, that you would be with us in, in our mission as we minister, Lord, to people uh, outside this congregation, Lord. We also lift up our uh, financial needs as a church. Help us to have the faith to know, Lord, that when we give to you, Lord, that you're going to provide for uh, our ministry needs. We pray that we would always be, Lord, committed uh, to you and, and to this church, Lord. Uh, help us to know the baptismal vows that we all have taken, Lord, uh, to support the prayer, to support the church uh, in, in all times and in all seasons. We lift up our country uh, right now, our nation right now. Help us, Lord, uh, to know, Lord, that we as Christians need to set the example. We lift up our president and our members of Congress, our vice president, Lord. Uh, help them, Lord, to uh, show the way, lead them, Lord, to, to follow your ways, and that we, Lord, would be the citizens uh, that you want us to be. We lift up now, Lord, our hearts and minds and ears as we hear your word spoken, Lord, that we would uh, know, Lord, more clearly what you have to say for us. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We pray all these things in the name of our, our Lord and Savior. And all of God's people said, Amen. Turn with me this morning to our scripture text. We're looking at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. This morning we're going to be looking at what Jesus means when he talks about the day of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. And um, there's also an insert this morning that you can follow along if, if you wish. Hear the word of the Lord. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. May God add a blessing in the reading of his word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your eternal word. And Lord, we know that even though this earth will pass away, your words, Lord, will never pass away. Pray that you would open up our hearts and minds. Pray, Lord, that you would guide every word that I speak, 
that would be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If there are three words that we need to know when it comes to the season of Advent, it is watch, wait, and be ready. Watch, wait, and be ready. And to illustrate this, I want to um, repeat uh, an illustration that William Barclay, a biblical commentator, says. He tells a fable which tells of three apprentice devils who were coming to the earth to finish their apprenticeship. They were talking to Satan, the chief of the devils, about their plans to tempt and ruin men. The first one said, I will tell people there is no God. Satan said, well, that's not going to delude many, for people know that there is a God. The second one said, I will tell men there is no hell. Satan answered, you will deceive no one that way. Men know even now that there is a hell for sin. The third one said, I will tell men there is no hurry. Go, said Satan, and you will ruin them by the thousands. Barclay concludes by saying, the most dangerous of all delusions is that there is plenty of time. There are things which must not be put off, for no man knows if for him tomorrow will ever come. The spirit which leads to disaster is a spirit which says there is plenty of time. Unquote. Now this is not to scare us. Instead, it is to prepare us. On this first Sunday of Advent, the scripture tells us about the importance of waiting for the Lord's coming. In fact, if you look at our text today, Jesus tells us on three occasions that we do not know when the Lord will come. Verse 36, he says, Of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And verse 44 Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And in verse 42, he says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So Jesus tells us, don't be caught off guard. Always be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And the thing we need to remember and know about Jesus' coming is that he's not specific. Jesus doesn't go into detail. He doesn't give us specific details about his coming. He doesn't give us a specific time. He doesn't give us the exact day and time he'll come. And that drives some people crazy. Because people want to know when Jesus will come, the exact time. And so what you have throughout history and today, you have these false prophets who make their predictions of the exact day when Jesus will come. In 1831, there was a man who preached the end of the world would come. His name was William Miller. Miller studied the books of Daniel and Revelation in the Bible, and he devised a way to tell that Christ's second coming was to be expected in 1843. In fact, he convinced more than 700 ministers of various denominations and they welcomed Miller into their pulpits and they helped him to spread the word. When Christ did not come in 1843, Miller then recalculated and predicted two more dates in 1844. Again, nothing happened. And the sad thing is that over one million people left their churches to wait for Christ's coming. And even worse is many of these people did not return to their churches altogether because they were so disheartened. The lesson is this. We should always listen to the words of Jesus over the words of man. 
I don't care who that person is. And even though we don't know when Jesus will come, we should never take his coming lightly. We can't just throw up our arms and say no one knows when Jesus will come and so I'll just uh, forget about his coming. We can't do that. It is important. Because we read in his word that Jesus is coming. The second coming of Jesus is important. Because it's mentioned throughout scripture. It's mentioned in all four gospels. It's mentioned in the letters of Paul and the, and the gospels of Jesus. In fact, I counted 21 references to Jesus' second coming. And that's just in the New Testament. And if we are not prepared, we will be lost. So how are we to prepare for Christ's coming? One biblical commentator says this, make every day fit for Jesus. Make every day fit for Jesus. In other words, live each day with a belief that Jesus will come today. Always be ready. Always be prepared. Live your life as though he will come today. If you look at today's text, we see in uh, verses 38 and 39 that Jesus makes a comparison to our day as the days of Noah when it comes to Jesus coming. Back in Noah's day, it says that people were eating and drinking and marrying anybody they wanted with no thought of God at all in their lives until the earth was destroyed, then it was too late. And look at verses 40 to 42 of Matthew 24. This is interesting. He says, when Jesus comes, there's going to be two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. So this is saying that when Jesus comes, we're going to be doing our everyday chores. That's what he means when he says, you know, one's going to be grinding in the mill. That's an everyday type of job. One's going to be working in the field. That's an everyday type of job. And suddenly Jesus comes. And what that means then is that one person will receive the judgment of God and be taken away, which is not good. The other will stay and be with the Lord. But the thing to remember is what Jesus says in verse 35 of Matthew 24. My words will never pass away. My words will never pass away. So trust God's timing and watch. In fact, in Mark 13, 37, Jesus tells us to watch for a lot of things. He tells us to watch for the signs of the great tribulation. He tells us to watch for his coming. He tells us to watch for the signs of the sun and the moon and the stars. He says, watch for wars. Watch for nations uprising against other nations. Watch for earthquakes and famines. Watch for false Christs who will tell you when Jesus will come. And you might be saying, well, I watch for these things, you know, the the solar events. And I've seen these things. Well, I have too. In my lifetime, I have seen uh, two solar eclipses. I have experienced, I think it was about six, seven years ago when I was living in Virginia, I experienced a mild earthquake. I don't know if you had that earthquake up here at this time, but there was a mild earthquake, and it kind of shook up everybody, literally and figuratively speaking, because we don't see that here in the eastern part of the nation. I also remember a severe drought that we had here in 1988, uh, a very hot and dry summer we had. And I remember there were people writing letters in the newspapers saying, you know, is Jesus coming? You know, why is God punishing us? I've also have seen several blizzards and snowstorms, although people don't talk about, talk about the second coming of Christ during a snowstorm, probably because they're having too much fun playing in the snow. I don't know. 
So all these events are nothing new. But they do cause us to think about our relationship with God and our relationships with the world. And sometimes these events can cause some people to have a wake-up call with God, a wake-up call to get your life back with God in order. But I believe Jesus is giving us a different message about his coming in the text for today. He's telling us, as he says in Mark 13, 33, take heed... Watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. In other words, Jesus says, be vigilant. Don't fear the signs of tribulation. Go with me to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 to 6. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 6, right after uh, Corinthians. We see here the Apostle Paul. He also talks about the day of the Lord, Paul does. It says, Concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. So in other words, Paul tells us to always be prepared, prepared for my coming. And when they talk about the the labor, I was thinking thinking back to the time when, um, before Daniel was born, uh, when Rachel was uh, pregnant with Daniel. I remember how Rachel and I, we were so looking forward uh, for Daniel's arrival. We're looking for him to be born. And because Rachel was, was tired of being sick, you know, that, that sickness that you have. And we were so prepared for Daniel to, to arrive. And we were making our plans, even made our plans to go to the hospital as soon as those uh, labor pains came. Of course, you know that there's these false contractions and that was kind of driving us, you know, up the wall, you know, is this the real thing or not? But we got to the point where, you know, we we had our suitcases all packed when that time came. And I remember one evening, Rachel and I went to bed, it was about 11 p.m., and Rachel said she was having some back pains. And I, you know, I didn't think anything of that. I thought, you know, she's just having back pains. But about 1.30... Rachel uh, told me to call the hospital. It's time. And so I was kind of hurrying around, getting all things ready. You know, here it is, 1.30 in the morning, getting all these things ready. And I was driving down, or driving down to the hospital, I'm all nervous and scared. And I look at Rachel, and, and, and she's happy, and she's excited. I'm thinking, what are you excited about? You know, you're going to have a baby. But she was excited, you know, because she's thinking, you know, it, it's finally coming. You know, we're going to have this baby, and, and we're, all, we're all ready to go. And so she called her other sister from uh, Salem, and, you know, she kind of has this, this sense of humor where, where she's saying, oh, this is Operation Baby Time. I can't wait. Let's, let's, let's get this done. And so we're all ready for, for Daniel's arrival. We're prepared. When you are ready for the Lord to come, You will never be scared. You'll never be scared. You look forward with anticipation. Now, on the other hand, we don't want to be caught off guard. We all remember what that was like. A 9-11 came. As a nation, we were caught off guard. But when we're in Christ, these things should not scare us. They should not uh, cause us to be caught off guard. Many people today see the coming of Jesus Christ as doom and gloom, as an event of doom and gloom. Well, it's doom and gloom for those who aren't prepared to meet him. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 4. You, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, Paul says, don't be overwhelmed with the things that we see in the news. Jesus says these things will happen. 
Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, right past Hebrews and James. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. A, a wonderful uh, passage of scripture here. 2 Peter 3, verse 13. I'm sorry, 2 Peter 3, 13. Let's talk about the day of the Lord again. He says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, that's, that's God's promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So that says we need to see the second coming of Jesus as a new life, a new adventure, a new heaven, a new earth. And that means that we can't, can't live our lives thinking that this earth and this life is everything we have. It's not. It's not. This life is not everything. We will one day, as Christians, have a brand new life and a brand new body. And this is what gives us hope for our future. Now, there are a couple things that we need to be certain about when it comes to Christ's second coming. We know from Scripture that Jesus will come from the sky. He'll come from the sky. Look at Mark chapter 13, verse 36. Mark 13 I'm sorry, Mark 13, 26. Mark 13, 26, Jesus says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Uh, this, this takes me back to when I was 11 years old. Uh, where I grew up, there was a red barn. I remember we would, we would on the way to church, we'd pass this red barn. They had in big letters, Jesus is coming soon. And I often thought what that would look like. And I always pictured in my imagination what this would look like when Jesus comes. I imagine him as this big giant guy who's walking around the earth, you know, kind of stomping on, on, on people that he doesn't like. And I thought to myself, well, what's he going to do with the people that he does like? You know, that was my imagination. But I was right in the th sense that he was going to come from the sky. That's what the Bible says. If you look at Acts chapter 1, verse 11, it says, Jesus went up into heaven after he rose from the dead. So he went up into the sky, and people saw him go up in the sky. Daniel 7, verse 13. Daniel says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. So we know that Jesus will come from the sky. The other point we need to know is that Jesus will come with great power and glory, and his kingdom will not be destroyed. Jesus will come with great power and glory, and his kingdom will not be destroyed. Uh, turn with me to Daniel chapter 7, verse 14. This is a well-known passage when it comes to the second coming of Jesus. And this is how Daniel describes it. It says, Then to him was given dominion and glory and the kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Now, this will be a shock to the world, to know that Jesus is going to come with great power and glory, and his kingdom will not be destroyed. This is going to be a shock to the world because people today want the power and the glory. Who wants the power and the glory? People want the power and the glory. The nations, the nations want the power and the glory. Political groups want the power and the glory. Just look at some of our congressional sessions and what's going on. Political groups want the power and the glory. But Jesus says in his word, only he will have the power and the glory in his second coming. But that means what? It means that we should not be afraid. It means that when we see the terrorist groups flex their muscles around the world, we can be sure that they'll be destroyed when Jesus comes. They're not going to last forever. They might think they have power. We might think they have power. They don't have power. They're going to be destroyed when Jesus comes. Therefore, we should not fear them. Or when we see the looting in our cities, we 
we should not fear that. They'll be gone when Jesus comes. The second coming of Jesus should be an event that gives the church, that gives us hope for the future. But the power and the glory of Jesus is not just something we look forward to in the future. It's not just something that, that, that is an event. We personally can receive this power through the Holy Spirit ourselves. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, verse 11. This, this gets personal now when it comes to receiving in the power, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 11 of Romans 8, If the Spirit of Him, that is God, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So let me ask you a question as we conclude the message this morning. The question is, do you believe the Spirit of Jesus dwells in you? The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, do you believe that Spirit dwells in you? Some people believe they can get this power on their own, but how did Jesus get that? Jesus got that power by going to the cross, by humbling himself. And it works the same for you and I. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord, accept him into our hearts and lives, and trust him. Trust him for your future. Trust him and know that he has a plan he has a purpose for his coming. And if there's anything in your life that you believe is, is interfering, we need to make that right with God today. We should not fear the second coming of Jesus. Instead, we need to wait with anticipation because it will be a glorious time and a glorious time with our Lord and all believers. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your words of prophecy, for your words of scripture, for your promise of your coming into the world and coming into our lives. We thank you for um, how you've done that through the cross, Jesus. And I pray for anyone this morning, Lord, who's struggling with their lives, with their spiritual life, if they have not received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that they would make that decision today. And Lord, I know that we bring many burdens, many fears uh, into our lives. We pray that we would just lay that down at the cross this morning. Help us, Lord, to trust you. That, that you have a plan and purpose for everything in our lives. We thank you, Lord. And we wait with anticipation for your coming. Help us, Lord, to celebrate that as people of, of God. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all uh, stand and sing our, our closing song as we uh, look forward to what the Lord has. Good Christian men rejoice. And this morning, if the Lord has spoken to your heart, and if you need to make a decision for the Lord, or if you need prayer, I invite you to come forward. Would you stand, please?
As we leave here today, take heart to these words of the scripture from the Apostle Paul concerning the day of the Lord. He tells us to be specific. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You did a good job.